my name is Madison Davis and I'm a, and I'm a 2020 R I will also briefly present an overview of Northrop Grumman's Advanced Technology Laboratories, the products NG delivers, and the various technologies we work with. Northrop Grumman's ATL Foundry is considered a high mix DoD volume production and research and development facility, as well as a DoD trusted foundry and it has a AS900 certification. This certification is given to organizations that focus on developing aerospace systems for quality assurance in design, development, and production. As a DOD-trusted United States Foundry, we deliver assured production as well as discriminating research and development. The ATL Foundry is over 30,000 square feet of wafer fabrication space and constantly expanding. Within the facility, about 400 highly experienced technical staff and over 50 subject matter experts support work on a multitude of technologies, including silicon, gas, GAN, superconducting, mimics, and so many others. In 2020 alone, ATL staff was able to deliver more than 800,000 devices to over 41 programs. As stated in the previous slide, slide we had over 41 different programs that we delivered to last year alone. This slide shows a handful of the programs ATL Microelectronics supports, such as the F-16, F-22, F-35, and a handful of others. One thing ATL prides itself on is its unique capability to house over 30 different production processes in one facility with more processes in development. No other foundry in the United States has the ability to support the DoD with a high mix, high volume microelectronics facility. Our production line uses CMOS, SIGI, GAS, GAN, and others to create devices for our customers. Currently, ATL is in development stages for RQL, reciprocal quantum logic, as well as GAN slick fit amplifiers and CNT low, low noise amplifiers and mixers. Northrop Grumman has a great rotational program that allows new college grads the opportunity to rotate through three different rotations, each lasting a year. This program is called the Pathways Program and is what Sarah, Nicole, and I are a part of. These rotational opportunities allow early career development and an ability to develop a foundation for future success. So a little bit about me is I am originally from Northeast PA. I graduated from Nazareth Area High School in 2015 and I visited RIT initially through the Women in Engineering Tour, as well as an overnight my junior year through RIT's College and Careers event. While there, I was able to tour the clean room, meet with the MyCareer staff, and really started to feel like RIT was the right college for me. I applied directly into the MyCareer program was, and was accepted. When I began at RIT in the fall of 2015, I quickly got involved with volleyball work and MyCareer classes. I think the two classes that really resonate with what I am currently working on today at Northrop is my SIGI class with Dr. Rommel, and Stats DOE with Dr. Yu Bang. Outside of my career classes, I had a passion for learning languages and I was able to integrate a German minor into my coursework before graduating in May 2020. When looking for a full-time job, I wanted a company that had a great work-life balance that worked with cutting-edge technology, as well as gave the option to experience multiple parts of the company through some type of rotational program. Northrop had all of these. I applied before the fall 2019 career fair and was able to be interviewed the next day. Within a few days, I had received an offer and accepted it a few weeks later. I started work at Northrop Grumman in July after graduating and I'm currently working as a process integrator in the Pathways program, along with the Emerging Te Technology Group to develop novel build techniques that support superconducting electronics. My day-to-day -day functions include a lot of lab time, moving lots, and plenty of data analysis. And my future plans from here include my next rotation in a project management role to see a different engineering perspective and to eventually return to school to pursue a career in patent or corporate law. So while at RIT, I had three co-ops with two different companies, and this co-op program was really one of the main reasons that I chose RIT to begin with. The first was with the AE Systems in Nashville, New Hampshire, where I worked for the RF Front End Capability Group. I was responsible for design and completion of test module for the EPOS program, as well as then when I returned to DOD systems for my second co-op with the Semiconductor Manufacturing Group, I focused on photolithography process engineering. And finally, my last internship was with Samsung Austin Semiconductor in Austin, Texas, where I was able to work as a process engineer in the implant high current team. I was responsible for 
creating a new sampling method for proprietary systems to decrease stop loss, as well as developed NPW automated qualification flows to generate a more efficient work environment. Overall, I wouldn't change anything about my RIT experience because it really helped me get to where I am today. So our next speaker will be Nicole McIntyre, who will be discussing her role as a dry etch process engineer. Hi everyone, as Maddie mentioned, my name is Nicole McIntyre and I am originally from Westchester, New York, and I graduated from the Ursuline School. All throughout high school, I always enjoyed math and science and starting my sophomore year, I enrolled myself into my school's research classes. My senior year of high school, I was lucky enough to participate in a summer research opportunity where I worked at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. And while I enjoyed the work that I did, it was during that experience that I realized that working in a biology research lab for the rest of my life just didn't really seem ideal to me. Um, I wanted something more. So through the guidance of my peers, I decided to pursue biomedical engineering. Soon enough, I found, visited, and fell in love with RET. I thought RET's co-op program was awesome because it would give me a great hands-on work experience in the field I was studying in. Also, I for one am a huge fan of all the brick. And while on my first tour of RET, I was introduced to microelectronics. At that time, I had absolutely no background in microelectronics whatsoever, but it sounded like something I could wake up every day and be excited to learn about. And it was during that tour that I told myself I would do a minor in microe. Well, turns out that after my freshman year, I realized that biomedical engineering just wasn't for me. So I officially switched into the microelectronics department and I haven't regretted it since. Throughout college, I played for RIT's rugby team. In my senior year, we went to nationals in the fall. And that same year, I interviewed with Northrop Grumman at the 2019 Fall Career Fair and ended up getting an offer. I was thrilled to soon be working for Northrop. I love their Pathways Rotational Program that I'm currently in because it gives me the freedom and flexibility to gain different work experiences and knowledge with each rotation for innovative work and projects. Within my five years at RIT, I completed four different co-ops. My first co-op took place working for RIT Semiconductor and Microsystems Fabrication Laboratory, also known as the SMFL, with Scott Blondell. I was working as a laboratory supervisor intern and oversaw all of the student workers. It was my job to ensure that all the daily lab tasks were being completed in an efficient and timely manner. My second co-op, I worked for a company called PCB Piezotronics where I was a process engineering intern and worked on implementing a process flow for a customer product by developing and running process steps. My third co-op, I worked for Micron Technology as a CVD process engineering intern, and I worked on optimizing an automated system for improving team member interface for data collection. My fourth co-op, I worked at On Semiconductor, and I worked as a lithography process engineering intern while working there, I was in charge of creating and implementing a new qualification slash verification process for their tool set for a new resist. And while these co-op experiences had a huge impact on my learning and preparation for the semiconductor workforce after college, they alone were not enough. I took various different courses at RIT that also aided to my transition from student to full-time engineer. Some of these classes I'd like to mention were Dr. Jackson's then films course, where I learned various different aspects of dry etch, such as plasma etching, and Dr. Pearson's CMOS course, where I learned about CMOS process flows and mimicked various different fab area process engineering jobs. And lastly, senior design, where I worked with Dr. Kernick on creating, implementing, and verifying a product process flow. As mentioned previously, I work in dry etch as a pathways process engineer. As my manager likes to say, process engineers are the hub of the fab. We are the bridge and balance between the needs of manufacturing, equipment, process, and product requirements. All of these clean room areas have needs and we as the process engineering group bring these needs together and move them forward in production and in development. So the dry etch area itself is the area in the clean room that deals with the removal of pattern materials. Substrates are placed inside a vacuum chamber where pressure is reduced to a very low base pressure. The substrates are then submerged in reactive gases and a plasma is ignited. The pattern layer is then removed by chemical reactions and or physical means such as ion bombardment. 
The volatile byproducts are then carried away in the gas stream. Most dry etch processes are anisotropic and achieve a precise pattern transfer. My day-to-day -day work activities change on the daily depending on the needs and priorities of the fab. But my main focus throughout the day is being first shift backup tool owner for the ashers. This means that I help maintain and keep the tools operational during first shift. If a tool goes down, it is my responsibility to start an investigation and bring the tool back up in an efficient and timely manner as well as assisting with the determinations of root causes and tool recoveries after hard downs and monitoring weekly qualifications and monthly preventative maintenance procedures by using charts that you can see on the right. I also work with different programs to help aid in production support by monitoring tool qualifications and product runs. I aid in etch optimization to improve trench profiles and CDs and via etch process development. I work hand in hand with process integrators such as Maddie and Sarah to create and optimize etch recipes that will help achieve desired features for our product process flows and run developmental lots for them. For my next rotation, I would like to go into process integration so I can be on the other side of the equation for process development and further expand my experience and knowledge to make myself an even more well-rounded engineer. Our next presenter is Sarah Taylor, and she works as a Pathways Process Integrator. Thanks, Nicole. As she said, I'm Sarah Taylor, and I'm going to go over my journey from high school to Northrop Grumman. I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and attended Kenmore East High School. There, I took Project Lead the Way courses that are actually run through RIT. They are a collection of technology classes grouped in what was called a pre-engineering academy. And this program was designed to introduce you to engineering, and that's how I decided I wanted to be an engineer. I chose RIT for the same reason every engineer chooses RIT, for their co-op program. I was also interested in RIT's unique undergrad micro-e program because that's a new emerging major. Lastly, I was talking to the varsity D3 volleyball coach at RIT about playing volleyball for the school. Uh, RIT just kind of checked all of the boxes for me. I initially entered RIT as an engineering exploration major because I wasn't really sure what type of engineering I wanted to go into. I was leaning towards electrical, but I couldn't decide between electrical engineering and microelectronic engineering, so I chose both. I ended up majoring in electrical engineering and minoring in microe. RIT also gave me the amazing opportunity to study abroad. In the spring of my third year, I was able to take engineering classes in Ireland, which gave me more of a worldview of engineering. I got the chance to use Cadence Virtuoso in one of my classes over there, and it was cool to see that it's an international design software. In my fourth year at RIT, I started my master's level courses in the MSBS program. I was able to graduate with both my master's and bachelor's in electrical engineering within my five years at RIT. Lastly, electrical engineering majors typically take multidisciplinary senior design. However, because I saw my career focusing more on the semiconductor industry, I was able to talk to my advisor and take the microE senior design instead. I believe the research, device design, and clean room fabrication I experienced in microE senior design was more beneficial towards my career than MSD would have been. I chose Northrop Grumman due to their unique collection of technologies all within one clean room. They have various different substrates and technologies that range from research and development to production. Because they aren't a major high volume manufacturer, there's more hands-on and process improvement work that can be done. They also have a great working environment. And out of all the companies that I interviewed with, Northrop Grumman seemed to have the best ratio. There are a lot of strong, intelligent female engineer role models to look up to within the company. Unlike Maddie and Nicole, I interned with Northrop Grumman before coming back full time. My first co-op with them was in the spring of my sophomore year. I worked in SlickFet process integration on the research and development side. I enjoyed working for Northrop so much that I came back the next summer and stayed in process integration, but this time I joined the compound group. The compound group was production, but low volume, so you can still perform a good amount of process improvement work. Then I wanted to see a different side of the semiconductor industry. 
Northrop Grumman is a defense contractor, so I wanted to see a more consumer-based company. So the summer after my fourth year, I went to Texas Instruments Fab up in Portland, Maine. They were a great company that gave me a good look at the other side of the semiconductor industry with a more high-volume fab. But I ultimately came back to Northrop. I'm currently in my first Pathways rotation in the Silicon Process Integration team. All of my experience with Northrop Grumman has been in process integration, which I really enjoy. This position allows you to see the whole fab process. You work with design engineers to process engineers that own the specific tools as the wafers run through the fab to test engineers at the end of fab. You get to monitor the wafers from beginning of fab to end of fab, then debug any problems or yield issues that have occurred in processing. Through my internships and now, I have slowly worked my way from research and development to production. Where I'm at now, which has been cool to see. For my next rotation, I'm finally going to leave process integration and join the design group. I see myself staying technical long term and hopefully eventually becoming a technical lead. Some of the projects I'm currently working on in my silicon PI role are a photobate qualification and wet etch tool transition. I get to run short loop blocks through the fab and take some images and CD measurements to qualify the process change. We are transitioning from an intense post-developed photobake to a less extreme alternative, as well as transitioning from an old to new wet etch tool. I also am supporting production and incident justification, as well as performing hand probing and root cause analysis. I'll talk a little bit about one of my root cause investigations. We had devices fail for high supply current at light test, which is an extended time and elevated temperature test. These parts don't normally fail at life test, and the parts from the other wafers in the lot had no failures. There were two events that could have caused the devices to fail. First, at about a third of the way through the life test, the voltages on the test setup were incorrect. When this issue was noticed, the devices were taken off the test and the health of the devices was tested. All of the devices passed, so they resumed testing, and about two weeks later, there was a power outage. I was given the task of determining if these were faulty devices or if one of these events caused the failure and what exactly the failure was. First, I performed manual probing. The plot on the left shows the supply current of two failing devices and a passing device. You can see the elevated supply current of the two failing devices. The plot on the right is the current of the output diodes. I tested all of the outputs and you can see the one failing output shows a short. So manual probing was able to confirm the severely elevated supply currents on the failing parts, as well as identify the single shorted output. Next, we performed some failure analysis techniques to identify the problem with the output. On the left is the infrared hotspot imaging. A voltage is applied to the device and images are taken under IR to identify the hotspot. You can see that the high current hotspot easily pops out under IR. The center picture shows liquid crystal hotspot imaging. This gives a more exact location of the failure. The device is coated with liquid crystal and a voltage is applied. The hotspot that I've circled is red in the picture and will actually pulsate under video to give an even more exact location. Using the location determined by these hotspot imaging techniques, we were actually able to fib the failure. The picture on the right shows the focused ion beam cross-section of the MOS drain contact failure. An electrical event caused this metal migration in the NMOS drain contact, creating the short. I was actually able to recreate this failure by applying excess voltage to the output of a healthy device and prove that an electrical event caused the device to fail. Overall, RIT's microelectronic engineering program prepared us well for a career in the semiconductor industry. For all three of us, the RIT Career Fair introduced us to the co-op experiences that shaped us into the engineers we are today. The Northrop Grumman Pathways program will help jumpstart our careers by enabling us to experience different sides of the company and become more well-rounded engineers. Northrop Grumman is on a path for aggressive microelectronics hiring for 2021 through 2026 to support our technologies that are transitioning from engineering to production. Lastly, of course, we want to give a huge thank you to all the MicroWee staff and faculty for five amazing years of mentorship and guidance.